Okay, so here we are on extension two, a question a day, day 15. Given that negative one is cos theta plus i sine theta, state the value of theta. So that's pretty straightforward, but let's work it through. So it says that cos theta plus i sine theta is equal to negative one. So we're saying that cos theta plus i sine theta is equal to negative one and i times zero. So if you can equate the real and imaginary parts, right, cos theta must be just equal to negative one, which means theta is equal to pi, right? Now remembering that, um, you know, how theta for a principal argument can be between negative pi and pi, and we allow it to actually take pi as the, the, the arbitrary value there, rather than negative pi. So that would be the answer to part one, part A. What's part B wanting us? Use De Moivre's theorem to find the non-real, in other words, the imaginary solutions, Z1 and Z2 of the equation Z cubed plus one equals zero. Well, when I said the imaginary solutions, I'm saying um, the um, solutions that just aren't purely real. So they're not purely imaginary, but they're complex numbers. That's what that's what it's saying. So um, because we can easily see that negative one is one of the solutions, right? So, but we've been asked to use De Moivre's theorem rather than just thinking about spacing it evenly around the plane and looking at the answer straight away. So z cubed plus one equals zero is what we're trying to, to solve. Um, in other words, z cubed equals negative one. And we've been asked to use De Moivre's theorem. So um, hold on, I'll just get myself a bit more room here. Um, let's give me a couple of pages to work with. Come back up. We've been asked to use the Moivre's theorem, so we better do so. So um, we're going to let z equal cos theta plus i sine theta. That'll be our best bet. And so they're saying that cos theta plus i sine theta is equal to negative one. And um, sorry, cubed because z cubed equals negative one is is what it is, and we're saying z is cos theta plus i sine theta. Right, now by De Moivre's theorem, that means that cos of three theta plus i sine of three theta equals negative one, by De Moivre's theorem, which is what they asked us to use, even though we could solve this without De Moivre's theorem. Um, and so the next thing we need to do is say, well, just like in the previous part, this is like cos three theta plus i sine three theta is equal to negative one plus i times zero. So clearly cos three theta is equaling negative one and sine three theta is equaling zero. All right, so three theta is equal to, now, um, theta, we want to value somewhere between minus pi and pi. Right? Let's just talk this through here. Theta, I want to get a value between minus pi and pi for principal argument. Right? So three theta that I come up with could be anywhere between minus three pi and three pi when I'm going searching for answers. Right. So this three theta here that I'm looking for could be minus pi, could be minus uh, two pi, but not minus three pi, right? It could be um, around a pi, could be two pi, and it could be three pi. So all those values are possibilities. Um, same if, look, if you looked over here with this one, this three theta, um, sine of what is zero 
All right. So sine um, of minus uh, 2 pi is 0, of minus pi is 0, of um, sine of 0 is 0, of pi is 0, sine of um, 2 pi is 0, sine of 3 pi is 0. All right, so all those give us um, values that we're after. Now, I'm not sure why I put minus 2 pi here. I'm just looking back at my working and going, um, cos of minus pi does equal minus 1, but cos of minus 2 pi doesn't. So I need to get rid of that off that list. All right, cos of pi is good, but not cos of 2 pi. And cos of 3 pi is good. Right? And so they're the only three values that work, even though I'm, I can get this big long list of values for if I use this side of things. It's got to be both this that I'm circling and that, right? both of these at the same time. So I'm looking for 3 theta equals minus pi, pi, and 3 pi. In other words, theta is equal to minus pi on 3, pi on 3, or just pi. So the non-real solutions to um, z cubed, uh, what was the original question? z cubed plus 1 equals 0 <coughs> are um, cis minus pi on 3, cis pi on 3, and but not cis pi because that's a real solution. True? Yeah. Okay. This gives gives real solution because it gives minus 1. So no end there. Get rid of that end. And there, there the answer's there. Now, as I explained before, you could have just straight away um, from your knowledge of complex numbers gone, um, here's the argan plane. I know that minus one is a solution. I know that the three solutions to z cubed equals minus one must be evenly distributed around the argan diagram. So we're talking 120 degrees each. So one of them's here, one of them's here. Um, and if that's 120 degrees, then that in there that I've got, that's a 60 degree, but going negative. So that's minus pi on three. So this will be cis of minus pi on three. And of course, this will be um, cis of pi on three. And I can find that by distributing, you know, the three solutions evenly across the plane. Now, the solutions are the dots. You don't need those lines. I'm just drawing them out there for the pictorial sake. But even if I only found two of the solutions, minus 1 and cis negative pi on 3, for example, I would know that cis pi on 3 is a solution because the original equation, right, it's all got all real coefficients in it. So any of the roots to the equation need to, like they're, any of the non-real as such as they're describing it, the complex numbers, will have the conjugate of it also being a root. That's why cis pi on 3 and cis minus pi on 3 are both roots there. Okay, let's have a look at what we, we've got to do for part C here. Part C, hence show that z1 squared equals negative z2 and z2 squared equals negative z1. All right, so part C. Well, let's let Z1 be cos minus pi on 3 plus I sine minus pi on 3. All right, now I'm just going back up there to see um, they didn't, they just said the non real solutions are Z1 and Z2. So yeah, I'm going to let that be the case there, and let's let z2 be cos of pi on 3 plus i 
sine of pi on 3. All right, now we've got to show what they asked us to show. So z1 squared is equal to cos of negative pi on 3 plus i sine of negative pi on 3 squared, which is cos of negative 2 pi on 3 plus i sine of negative 2 pi on 3 by De Moivre's theorem. Okay. Which is cos 2 pi on 3, because we know that cos of, um, you know, in here to do this, we know that cos of minus x equals cos of x. Just saying. So I'll use that to do that. Um, minus i sine of 2 pi on 3. Equals, now, cos of 2 pi on 3 is actually, you know what, I, I um, should have changed this cos 2 pi on 3 is the same as the negative cos of pi on 3. Now, that rule is that uh, cos of 180 minus x equals negative cos of x. So that's just a rule that I'm using in here. So that's cos of pi, minus cos of pi on 3. And this is minus sine of pi on 3 because sine of pi minus x equals sine of x. That's just a rule. So this is minus of cos pi on 3 plus i sine pi on 3, which is minus of z2, because we declared z2 to be cos pi on 3 plus i sine pi on 3. So that's that. And then the same sort of working will apply. z2 squared is cos of pi on 3 plus i sine of pi on 3 uh, squared, which is cos 2 pi on 3 plus i sine 2 pi on 3 by de Moivre, which is negative cos pi on 3 by the argument that uh, cos of pi minus x equals minus cos of x. And plus i sine of pi on 3 by the argument that sine of pi minus x equals sine of x. So that's equal to cos uh, minus cos of pi on 3. Uh, now, cos of pi on 3 is the same as cos of minus pi on 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that cos of minus pi on 3. I'm just explaining to you that cos of minus x equals cos of x. That's just a rule, right? So that and um, this is minus i sine of minus pi on 3 because, um, first of all, um, sine of minus x is equal to minus sine of x. So, um, I guess if I said sine of pi on 3 is the same as sine of minus of minus pi on 3. Which is the same as minus of sine of minus pi on 3. Okay, so that's how I can kind of explain that one. So that is actually minus of cos of 
of minus pi on 3 plus i sine of minus pi on 3, which is minus uh, z1 as required. All right, and finally, the last thing we've been asked to do, let's have a look. Part D, plot all those solutions on argon diagram and state their geometrical significance. All right, well, I've already plotted those, so I'll just quickly plot, plot once again. Um, there's your argon diagram with your real Z and your imaginary Z. All right, and this is Z3 out here at minus 1. Um, and this is Z. Now, we said the plus version was Z2 and the minus version was Z1. And geometrically, what the... Now, I probably should have written down what it is, like cis minus pi on 3 and uh, cis pi on 3. Um, what's the geometrical um, <coughs> significance? First of all, um, the solutions lie on a circle of radius 1. And the solutions are um, evenly spread around the complex plane. You know, 120 degrees apart. Um, the non-real solutions are con conjugates. reflections in the uh, real axis. Um, and this makes sense, as I said before, because the actual equation has um, all real coefficients. And um, note also that Z1 and Z2 and Z3 add up to zero. All right. Why is that? Because minus one and cos pi on three plus i sine pi on three plus cos negative pi on three plus i sine negative pi on three. Oh, I've just got to get a bit more room here. Oh, no, I need to undo what I just did then. I need to Yeah, there's some more room. Um, okay, all of those, that's what Z1 plus Z2, right? That's Z1. That's um, Actually, that's Z1, that's Z2, and that's Z3, right? And they all add up to minus 1. And you've got plus cos pi on 3, which is half. How about I write the actual value of that in? Uh, okay, so plus a half, plus I root 3 on 2, and then cos of minus pi on 3 is also a half, and plus i times and sine of minus pi on 3 is minus root 3 on 2. So these two go together to equal 1, and these here will cancel each other out. So minus 1 
plus 1 equals 0. Um, look, the other thing is that's interesting is z cubed <coughs> plus 1 equals 0. If you take z um, plus 1 outside of that <coughs> and factorise it, what would you get? And that's one of the things that we can get from part C because I just said that the sum of all these z1 and z2 and z3 adds to 0. But anyway, um, if you were to factorise that, if you couldn't remember how to factorise it, you would just say that's z squared, so z cubed plus z squared. So you'd get minus z squared um, um, plus 1. And then you go minus uh, z, and you get minus z squared minus z um, there. And so you'd get um, 1 plus z, or z plus 1. Um, you'd come out of that. Um, sorry, trying to do two things at once here. And finally, um, if you went well minus one, you get minus z and minus one, and it'd be like that. So that's z squared minus z minus one. That equals zero, which means that z plus one equals zero, or z equals minus one, and z squared minus z minus one equals zero. So that's quite interesting because um, this one here is what we called Z3 before and um, Z squared minus Z. Um, we, we worked out in part two that if Z was Z1, right? Um, then z2 squared equaled to that. So if you did z1 squared, right, that was equal to minus z2. It's basically what we're saying here then is that minus z2 minus z1 minus z plus z3. Um, equals to zero because z3 is minus one. Minus so z3 is equal to z1 plus z2 is um, another interesting factor if you add z1 and z2 and that, I think that does relate geometrically because Sorry, I'll just go down a little bit more. I'll explain that slightly more again um, you, That's your z3 and we're saying that's equal to this one plus this one well, when you add together uh, Z1 and Z2, right, their Y parts or their imaginary parts are going to cancel because one's up and one's down. And so you're going to be left just with the sum of their real parts, which is um, cos of minus pi on 3 plus cos of pi on 3, which is uh, a half plus a half, which equals 1. So, um, Z3 doesn't equal Z1 plus Z2, it equals the negative of Z1 plus Z2. So, this needs to be a negative in here. Um, and, of course, um, I need to fix up then what I've, my working is up here. So, I just need to get an eraser and pop it. And, that's meant to be a negative there, which means that um, 
this would need to be a plus in here uh, if this was going to work out okay which means that I've done something wrong in this so I just need to look through here um, I get z cubed plus so I'm re-looking at my polynomial division z cubed plus z squared uh, I should have got z cubed plus z squared which means I get minus z squared plus 1 and then put minus z I get minus z squared and minus z which means I'll get z plus 1 and then I should have just gone plus 1 yeah in order to get plus z and plus 1 and cancel it all right that's so that should have been a plus 1 which means that um, that's minus of z3 because minus of minus 1 z3 is minus 1 right so um, plus 1 is minus z3 and z1 is um, just z right Right. and 1 is minus of z3 and z squared would be z z1 squared right which is minus of z2 so you got minus z2 and minus z1 and minus z3 equals naught so z3 minus z3 equals z1 plus z2 and that makes sense in what I've done because minus z3 equals minus of minus 1 which is 1 and z 1 plus z 2 equals 1 oh, okay